<laughs> That'd be hilarious, the old sabotage, yeah? yeah just go through your whole list and you have to do it again. All right, so um, this exercise is an enormous exercise, but it's a pretty basic skill, and it's actually lots of fun. We're talking about what's called an inverse function. So, uh, what you should remember from methods, okay? If we have the line y equals x, then the function e to the x and ln of x are the inverse of one another because they are the mirror image of one another. Okay, that's something we have in 11 methods. Now, uh, sorry, in 12 methods. In 11 methods, we learn the difference between a relationship and a function. So a relationship will pass, um, a, a function will pass the vertical line test. So what we do is we just draw a series of lines along and we can see that the line only crosses the function once, so this is going to be a function, all right? Same here, all right, it's only crossing it once, so this is a function, but over here we can see it crosses it twice, so this is not a type of function, this is what we call a relation, a relation between two variables. So we don't recall that, and so what this means is that each x value has one unique y value. Guys, that's the descriptor of a function. Now we're looking at today a special type of function that has an inverse. Not all functions will have an inverse function. For a function to have an inverse, it must pass the vertical line test, but it must also pass the horizontal line test. So if we're drawing lines horizontally here, we can see that each line only crosses the curve once, so this means it passes the vertical line and the horizontal line test. This function will have an inverse. Okay. Over here, it passes the vertical line test, but it doesn't pass the horizontal line test. Okay. We can see y values. Okay. The y value of minus two or whatever it is. That y value of minus two has multiple corresponding x values. It does not pass the horizontal line test. So this will not have an inverse function, and this one doesn't pass the vertical line test, so it won't have an inverse function. So for it to have an inverse, it must pass both the vertical and horizontal line test. Okay, that's the definition of what's going to have an inverse. Good to know. Now, or just in terms of how we describe it, one-to-one -one function, okay, so we're on page 16 of our notes, a one-to-one -one function is one that satisfies the vertical line test and the horizontal line test. And so what it means is each x value has only one y value and each y value has one unique x value. Okay, so they correspond. Um, and then as far as notation goes, if we use f of x to describe the function, then the inverse is f minus one of x. Okay, that's gonna be the inverse function. All right, so let's start here then with this function, we have the equation of a line, three plus four x on top of two. Now, part A says, on the axis below, sketch the graph of f of x and f of minus one of x. Now, straight away, whenever, I'm gonna break this up slowly, whenever we see on top of a number, which is yeah, always three, subtract four. Yeah, I'm gonna change it to plus, sorry. It's gonna right. better demonstrate our series of We're gonna pull that out the front straight away. So we'll have half times, 3 plus 4x. It's really important that whenever you see a number at the bottom, you don't get confused by it. If we have sine x on top of 2 or x on top of 2, all it means is to pull that number out front. It's just a number. Okay? And I'm doing this over a series of steps just to demonstrate. Alright, this is this is what it is, which is the same, uh, sorry, I'm doing two, which is the same as 2x plus 3 or 2. This is the equation of a line. All right, so looking at that, some people might go, oh, it's just a function of some variety, but when we break it down into these components, we can see very clearly y equals mx plus c. So let's have a sketch of that, and I'm gonna do so here. So I've got my Cartesian plane, I've got yours provided for you. So what we've got, um, I've got here one, two, three, four, five, and the same here, one, two, three, four, Five, I'll go down here a bit. Okay, so when we're graphing the equation of a line, we start with the y-intercept, which is 3 or 2, 1.5, there it is there. Alright, and we have a slope of 2. Alright, the slope is 2. That means as x goes across 1, y will go up 2. 
So we can go across one and up two units. All right, 1.5 plus two takes you to 3.5. So that has a y value of 3.5 and an x value of one. So just to explain that again, we start with the y-intercept, plot that point, okay? And then we look at the slope, all right? It's a positive slope, which means it's increasing. We go across one unit, up two units. Whatever the value is n is, that's how much you're gonna go up or down. All right, and then we're just drawing a line through those points. I can get another point along here as well. I'm gonna go across one down two in this direction, which will take me to, I'm at one and a half, negative half. All right, and I'm gonna sketch a line through those points as best as I can up here with my cordwood. All right, so that's the equation of f of x. Now I'm gonna sketch up there as well in multi color, so I'm gonna sketch up the uh, line y equals x. All right, that's the line about which is the inverse. Now, we're going to try and sketch the inverse function just based off of it being the mirror image about the line y equals x. So what you're thinking about is if I were to fold this in half, like in kindergarten when you do a butterfly painting, you know you paint one side, fold it in half, get the paint on the other side. We're going, to, we're going to fold our butterfly in half and we're going to put that line over there. And so to begin with, let's just sketch what we think it's going to look like. Alright, so basically this part's going to be mirrored here. Alright, so I'll just sketch that there pretty roughly. And this part here is going to be mirrored here. Alright, and that's going to be our inverse function. That's how we can start to think about sketching it. Now, in order to be more accurate about it, alright, this coordinate here, alright, this coordinate here is x is 0, y is 3 or 2, which means on the inverse function, that corresponding coordinate will be 3 on 2, 0. They just swap, all right? They swap position. So uh, I'm pretty close. And similarly, you can do the same for this one. You know, this coordinate here is x is 1, y is a 3 and a half, all right? Which means here it'll be three and a half and one. And I'm pretty close there as well. Okay, so in order to sketch the uh, inverse, we can just go straight off of um, swapping the coordinates around. All right, cool. Now we're gonna look at two processes for finding the equation of it. I'll let you guys finish the sketch there. But find the equation of f minus one of x. Firstly, using coordinate geometry, okay? So what we know, okay, we know that the original function passes through zero and three on two and one and 3.5 or seven on two, you can write it as. Right, we know that the original function passes through those points. And so we've established that means the inverse function passes through these points. Now, in this circumstance, because it's the equation of a line, we can find this just by using those coordinates. So we're recapping. How do we find the equation of a line? The equation of the line is y equals mx plus c. M is the slope. Now remember, I'm not using these coordinates, that's of the original function. I want to know the equation of the inverse function, and I know these coordinates lie on the inverse. So, y2 take y1, on top of x2 take x1, that's like 3.5. So we have a slope of half, all right? So now we write that in the equation of the line. We've got y equals half x plus c. We need to determine the value of c, and we can use either of the coordinates we're provided with. It doesn't matter which one we use. Let's use this one, because it's got a zero, zero is nice. So we'll have um, when x is three on two, y is zero. 
So I'm going to plug that information in. We've got zero where the Y is, and we'll have three on two where the X is. Process this. We'll have three on four plus C. And so we have C is minus three quarters. of the line then, uh, half f to take 3 on 4 is going to be the equation of the inverse function. Alright, and so we can sketch, you know, you can sketch both of these in your graph. If, uh, we, now that we know the equation of it, you can sketch it and see that it will be the, um, uh, the symmetrical without the line like this. Okay, that's the first strategy we can do. That's just using coordinate geometry, you taking the coordinates that we know are aligned. The second one is using variable interchange. So I'm going to take the form we've got written down here. You can start with this form, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to start with this, alright? So the equation we have of this line is y equals 2x plus 3 on 2. Now, in order to find the inverse, all we have to do is swap x and y. So if I were to swap x and y, it would be this statement, 2y plus 3 on 2. And now all we do is solve for y. We try and get y by itself. So firstly, um, I'll, the first thing I'm going to do is just move the y to the left hand side, just as my preference to solve for the left. All right, so all I've done there is swap them. We'll subtract 3 on 2 from both sides. And then multiply both sides by half or divide both sides by two. And we have the same equation. Okay, so they're the two strategies that we can use for finding the inverse function. Very good. We'll turn the page there. And we've just got a couple of inverses to draw here. On the graph below, draw the inverse functions and state their domain and range. Okay, so we got there's our plotted line, and we have the equation of the line going like this. Okay, so if that's the function we're presented with, then the inverse is just going to be the mirror image of it. We just draw it as best as we can. It's going to look like that. That's our first one. And it wants us to answer the domain and range of both functions. Well, there's no constraints here. The domain is x, e, r, and the range is yeah. Okay, for the second one, you're going to have to extend your x axes a little bit. I got a bit too carried away with the cropping. So the function starts here and goes like this. Okay, here's the line y to x. So if we're drawing the inverse function now, now this coordinate is x is 0, y is minus 2, which means the corresponding coordinate is going to be x is minus 2, y is 0. That's going to be our coordinate on the function there. Wherever it crosses the inverse line, they're both going to cross the line at that point. So I'll just write the coordinate for y. Minus two zero. And so it's going to look something like this. Where does it cross the x axis? I'll put that in as well. At one and a half. So that means this one's going to cross the y axis at one and a half. Out there. So something like this. Okay. Being the inverse functions of one another. Now, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to write the domain and range for both, just to point out a relationship. If I think about the initial function, f of x, I've got it in black, so I'll write its domain and range in black. Its domain is x is greater than or equal to 0, 
and its range is y is greater than or equal to minus 2. Okay, that's the original black function we started with. And then let's just look at the graph we've got and write the domain and range for the inverse function, and we'll point out the relationship. The domain is x is greater than minus 2, and the range is y is greater than 0. Alright, so the domain and ranges will just swap. Um, so do they always cross the um, y equals x bar at the same point? Correct. Yep. Okay, last one. This one will be a little bit trickier to draw. So we'll come up here. Now we have hit the line and it's done the line. This crosses up one and then this asymptotic here. Okay, so the first function is asymptotic to the x axis, which means our inverse function is going to be asymptotic to the y axis. And then let's just try grab some coordinates that it's got in common. So this one here is x is 0, y is 1, which means on our, our new graph, it's going to be x is 1, y is 0. So that's going to be uh, here. They both cross there. And we know it's going to be asymptotic to the y axis. And so it just looks like that, right? Yeah, if you fold them in half, that part corresponds with that part, that part corresponds with that part. So just getting in the habit of sketching them. Very good. Okay, our last question then. We've got sine of x. Consider the function f of x equals sine of x. Okay, now if we have a look at its graph, sine of x looks like this. Alright, and it's periodic, it keeps repeating, right? Now it says, what explain why this does not have an inverse function. So we can write it passes the vertical line test, but it doesn't pass the horizontal line test. Okay, we can write that. That's a long way of saying it. But remember, we've described it as the function is many to one. Each y value, okay, so let's say a y value of half, has multiple x values. And so this function is many to one. Many to one. And a many to one function will not have an inverse. Okay, now this is where we get a little bit clever because we restrict the domain of f of x. Now consider f of x from 0 to pi on 2. So I'll sketch that for you. That's what it looks like. Okay, if, that, if f of x is sine x and we're graphing it from 0 to pi on 2, that's what it's going to look like. Part B, consider the function. Part 1, explain why this now has an inverse. Okay. Now that we've restricted the domain of this function, all right, now that we've restricted the domain of it, it is a one-to-one -one function, one-to-one -one over this region. Isn't it? It passes the vertical line test and the horizontal line test. So it does have an inverse when we constrain it. And in fact, I said not all functions will have an inverse, but all functions have the capacity to have an inverse if we restrict their domain constraints upon them. Alright, so it's one to one over this region. Part two, um, sketch the graph of f of x and f of minus one of x. Alright, so the line y equals x, mm, where's that going to go? Because this coordinate here, this coordinate here is x is pi on two and y is one. So I don't have a grid here, I've got this on my calculator, you're off my calculator. Now pi on two, that's the same as 1.57, right? Pi is 3.14, 3.14 divided by 2. That's a, that's a coordinate of 1.57. So if I'm going to put 1 on here, like 1's going to be like there, so that means I might have to change my sketch a little bit. I'll have, there's 1, here's 1, and here's pi on 2. Alright, so the first one reaches a maximum at x is here. Alright, that's the first curve. x is pi on 2, y is 1. 
Now the line y equals x must pass through the point one one, which is there, and we'll just like that. That's the line y equals x. And so then the inverse would be like this. Is it x is one, is y is final two? Here we have x is final two, y is one. So it's just exaggerating those. Alright, so it's a big exercise. From memory there's like 19 questions or something. Um, but that's all we're going to do today. And I think we'll find it pretty okay. We'll just slowly work through it. Um, yeah, do some stuff together. And yeah, that's the plan. Alright, let's get cracked and lacking.